welcome to NAM. Thank you very much. I am Shazam, the iPad producer, and we as a community have a few questions for you. We see you have a new product here, and uh, we would love to know how well that will work with the iOS community. Well, the Play 12? Yes, sir. I mean, this, this product's been out for about a year now. Okay. And this was designed, it's a, it's a different kind of approach for us than, than in the past. We designed this box specifically for the live uh, playback community. And it's designed, it's not primarily designed as, uh, like some of our previous interfaces, with direct iPad compatibility. Right. But that doesn't mean it can't be used for an iPad. So what this box is for, and uh, you can see we have a couple of computers here at the moment. What this box is originally designed for is that it has, it has two USB ports like our previous boxes, but these ones are not designed primarily for the iPad. They're designed primarily for a Mac or a Windows box. And so it's designed for live playback because the biggest problem live is things go wrong. And what happens when your computer crashes? If you're standing up there, I've been that guy standing there behind a microphone for the longest two minutes of my life while somebody reboots the computer. Now, one of the great things, I actually use, with my own band, I actually use iPads Live. And one of the great things about iPads Live is if something goes wrong, you get that thing back up and running again in seconds. Yes, sir. And trust me, I've had to do that. So, um, so we built this box for those guys using big computer systems. Gotcha. Um, so it does redundancy. When, uh, if, if the A computer crashes or if a cable gets pulled out, it automatically switches to the B computer in microseconds. Not milliseconds, microseconds. So the ear won't even hear it. It's, it's literally impossible for your brain to comprehend that you can't hear it. Because your brain's about, takes about a, one and a half milliseconds, and it's much faster than that. So you don't hear a glitch, you just, the music keeps rolling. So this has become the major box for major tours. We're on tour right now with Cardi B, Mariah Carey, Wiz Khalifa, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Shaggy, you name it. I mean, someone earlier was asking her for our, uh, what our client list was. We were like, go to the billboard, the, go to, Billboard Top 100 in Google, <laughs> and you'll be pretty close. Wow, so it's really taken us to a whole new market that we weren't at before, which is great. But guys, you want to use iPads for this, it's still completely possible. Now, you'll, you, we don't have the special cable and the special circuit rate like we had in the previous ones, but you can use a CCK easily, especially the new USB 3 one with the power. Really, uh, really recommend it. We've tested that with it, it works great. The great thing about the Play Audio 12, it has no inputs. When we first built it, people said, are you guys crazy? <laughs> Who wants a box with no inputs? Right. And we're like, no, this just has 12 outputs. Right. So if you're doing a lot of backing tracks, virtual instruments, you can have your kick, snare, hats, bass guitar, strings, backing vocals, whatever you want, kind of all their own channels. And it's also phantom safe. I mean, you can plug it, it's a, a stereo, bounce out, you can plug it straight into a PA. If someone presses the phantom power, nothing will happen. What, where any, most other interfaces, it goes boom, and it doesn't just go pop, it goes pop, and then it never makes another noise ever again. Because a lot of interfaces do not like having 48 volts sent into them. Ours will handle that perfectly. So it's it's a really great light box and people are loving it. So that's really great. Um, so yeah, next question. Now, with, with the new iPad Pros that have the Type C uh, USB, excellent. How many with that? Excellent question. This is probably the number one question we get on support right now. The answer is it's easy. And the great thing about USB C is that it's a completely standard interface. It's not it's not proprietary like Lightning. It's part of the USB spec. And um, because of that, because these are USB, it just works. So that means it's what you actually what you actually need is that the, the great thing, the, the difference between USB-C and previous forms of USB is if I take, like a normal USB cable has got two different ends. It is an A end and a B end. And the A is the master and the B is the peripheral, host and peripheral, okay. right? Now USB-C, if you know the cable, it's the same. And the reason for that is that with USB-C, 
a host, uh, the device itself tells the connection that they're the host or the peripheral. Okay, okay gotcha. so a computer normally will say, I'm a host. Right, right, right. And an iPod or an iPhone will normally say, I'm the peripheral. Gotcha. And so when you connect them together, it'll normally just work. However, there's a special function in USB-C called on the go, OTG. And an OTG connector, it's a, an OTG cable, has one end, it just says at the end, hey, that peripheral is really a host. Wow. Okay? okay? So you take an OTG cable and plug that in your iPod, the iPod then goes, hey, I'm in charge now. I'm the host. So it doesn't need that special lightning cable and that special circuitry. It just needs an OTG, on-the-go cable. And most USB-C hubs are already on-the-go compatible. So if you plug that hub into your iPad Pro or the new iPads, which, let's face it, are also going to have USB-C because lightning's done. Um, and they will automatically become the masters. And then you plug the other end of that hub into our interface, it just works. Simple as that. Now the other cool thing about USB-C is that USB-C has a function called power delivery, PD. And, and uh, a, 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 a hub with power delivery means that you can plug your power supply straight into the hub and it will power the iPod. So again, we don't need to have any weird circuit rate. You just, if you just buy a USB-C hub with OTG and power delivery, you're done. It both works. So now, it's going to be great. Now, the software that you guys use when you talk between Macs and uh, your audio interface, does that same uh, software work with all your devices? Yes. So they all talk to each other and communicate with each other. That's right. That's the cool. other thing that we're just introducing now that um, you'll notice that all of our MIDI interfaces have Ethernet. Uh -huh. And we've never really used this before. Right. But now we have a new system that we're still in alpha testing, it's not finished yet, that allows you to send MIDI over Ethernet. And MIDI. Not MIDI, that's oh. audio. Oh. MIDI. MIDI, MIDI, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Real-time protocol, RTP MIDI. Oh, okay, So gotcha, we can gotcha. send MIDI over Ethernet. Well, you might be asking, that doesn't do me any good, I'm on an iPod, I don't have Ethernet. Well, if you have USB-C, USB-C is just a connector. It, it doesn't mean if you have a USB-C connector, that doesn't mean it's sending USB data. Gotcha, gotcha. USB-C connector can handle USB one data, USB two data, USB three data, wow. Thunderbolt data, wow. HDMI data, and Ethernet data. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah. So if you've got a, a Thunderbolt kind of iPad Pro, you have Ethernet. Wow. But not only that. If I plug the Ethernet on this into my into my router, mm -hmm. it will come up as a MIDI interface, and I can send it through my normal home router. Wow! And as, if I then bring up my iPad, wow! You know on Wi-Fi, it will send MIDI over Wi-Fi to the router and to the interface and to my devices perfectly. Wow! Is there any latency? With Wi-Fi, there is latency. Gotcha. Now, with with Ethernet, there's tiny latency. Right. Actually, on playback, there's no latency because it's timestamp. Right. So playback is always in time. Right. Whether it's Wi-Fi or Ethernet or whatever, playback's always in time because it sends the data ahead of time, timestamp, and then the interface just plays it out wow. at the right time. Wow. Now, if you're playing live, uh, with Wi-Fi, then you will have some latency. It's maybe about 10 milliseconds, which, depending on how fussy you are, is either going to work or it's not. You know, some people go like, I can't play with that. Some people are like, I'll struggle. I'll work. And then the problem with Wi-Fi is though that if you're in a place like this, forget it. You know, it's off, it's, you're off the hook, man. But um, but yeah, but apart from that, it's it's working really good. So that's another really interesting alternative now. And, and so that kind of Networking MIDI stuff is a really big thing for us in the future. And uh, so I think iPad users are, it's going to be really interesting, especially for the next, when the next generation comes, we're, we're already, we're already ready for it. Producer from Riverside, how you doing?